and when uh, we boarded the tank landing craft, we didn't know where we were going. We knew we were going to invade France, and that's all we knew. And it was dark down in the hold, and it was scary, uh, I must admit, <coughs> because you couldn't see anything. Anyway, uh, we got off the coast of Normandy, and the ramp went down, and my vehicle was the first off the tank landing craft. Uh, we splashed down into the water, and of course I could see, and I was no longer scared because I could see, and there were hundreds of ships discharging men and machines uh, uh, off the Normandy coast. Well, I didn't know it was the Normandy coast. All I knew it was France. And we splashed down into the water, uh, down the ramp, and we landed uh, <coughs> at a place <coughs> called Luc Semer. I can see it in my mind now. Uh, and we headed for Caen, which we were supposed to take on that first day. Unfortunately, the Germans were too strong for us and uh, we, we got no further than uh, a couple of miles uh, on the road to Caen. And we harboured up in a chateau uh, and we were there for four or five weeks uh, before we took Khan. I think it was five weeks before we were able to take Khan. After that, um, once Khan fell, uh, we just chased the Germans all the way up through France, Holland, Belgium, and back into Germany. And apart from one section where uh, they tried to push us back, which became known as the Battle of the Bulge. Uh, apart from that, uh, we chased them right back into Germany. And uh, we were, when I say we, I mean my regiment, uh, we were harboured up on uh, the banks of the River Mars at a place called Sambique. Uh, and we were there through all that bitter, bitter cold winter uh, of 1944-45, and it was bitter, it was terrible. They'd sent for me and Mick, who was same position as me, but for Sea Squadron, uh, they'd sent us down uh, onto what had been a German barracks and it was bitterly cold uh, and we were working on vehicles out on the barrack square uh, out in the cold we'd been told we could burn it get anything that'll burn and get yourself a five gallon oil drum knock holes in the bottom, make a fire, and uh, uh, there's plenty of bits of steel about. Put a steel plate on top of y your uh, five gallon oil drum uh, and put your tools on there and take it in turn, doing five minutes work and five minutes thawing out. Uh, and we did, Mick and I, were, uh, he'd hold my great coat near the fire while I was working and I'll hold his while he took over and was working on these vehicles. And uh, without warning, I'm not sure what it, if it wasn't January the 1st, but um, Jerry sent over his fighter planes and we got no instead of like they normally do they come down from high up screaming at you they came hedge hopping and we didn't get any warning until we were being fired on uh, 
da, 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 they'd gone, just just like that. It started there, and they were coming over a hedge hopping site uh, height uh, and firing away. Well, when we got the first sandings, Mick and I dived under the vehicle we were working on. <coughs> And while they did a lot of damage, I don't think anyone was hurt. I can't remember anyone being hurt. We weren't anyway. Uh, and uh, we didn't hear any more after that uh, about the Battle of the Bulge. Uh, we drove them back and that was it. <coughs> it was uh, very traumatic, of course, to be fired on by uh, what would the beast, uh, high cult or something like that, and uh, we didn't get chance to identify them. All we knew was that we, we had to get out of the firing line and we dived under this vehicle that we were working on uh, and uh, a lot of damage was done, and, but I don't think anybody got hurt. Uh, but. Uh, we, we'd driven the jerrys back over uh, the River Mars at least, they were the other side. They were still got to be driven across the Rhine, which came later. <clears throat> but um, uh, we were under canvas in all that bitter cold weather and one day the uh, order came that uh, one of our troop had been taken into Louvain Hospital uh, with diphtheria. So any person who had the least semblance of a, a sore throat had to report to the CO. Uh, the, uh, oh dear, the, the medical officer, the MO. Uh, and I felt a trickle in my throat, so I thought, well, I'd better go. And not, no more to do. I was bundled into a, a back of a Bedford QL. All my gear, uh, I lost my piano accordion, uh, and all my gear, everything was left in the tent. So what happened to it, I don't know. I suppose the lads shared it out. Uh, and I was sent to Levain Hospital. I was there for six weeks until they got three consecutive clear swabs. And there is now several blanks in my memory. I cannot remember being discharged from Levain Hospital <coughs> I obviously was, but how my next memory was being in a wireless telegraphy truck in Germany. How I got into that truck, I just don't know. My mind was a complete blank, and I remember uh, looking through the, the back window uh, of the wireless telegraphy truck uh, and we were in Hanover. What a mess it was. Oh, it was terrible. Uh, all the buildings had been smashed by our bombers and whatnot. Anyway, uh, the war was finished then uh, <coughs> and um, Uh, for a few weeks, I was uh, ordered to set up a corporal's mess because I was a full corporal by then. Uh, I was ordered to set up a corporal's mess, uh, which I did and made quite a success of it. And then uh, I was given seven days' leave. So off I went and got home for seven days, but I didn't come back to Germany. Uh, they sent me uh, 
across France and across the Med to Egypt. And uh, the idea was that we were to train ready for Japan. So just talk about that just now, just sort of to, re to finalise. Um, are you going back to Normandy this year? Oh to yes, to yes. So just, uh, just from your perspective then, what does that mean to you going back to Normandy? Oh, it means a great deal. The memories that come back to me. Uh, and we visit the beaches of course. Uh, last year um, my wife came with me uh, and I showed her it's 72 years since I landed on that beach and it's different. They've now built a walkway right out into the bay uh, and we were able to walk on this walkway uh, right out into the bay and uh, I judged where it was that I'd splashed down out of the landing craft and Maisie was able to uh, envisage what, what had happened uh, on Sword Beach uh, when I dropped out of the front of the uh, tank landing craft because we were the first vehicle out of it. Uh, and uh, we, we headed straight up onto the beach at Luxembourg. Uh, and then we should have gone up to Caen, but of course we, the Germans were too strong for us and they held us back. So we had to harbour up in a chateau uh, somewhere between Luxembourg and Caen. I can't remember the name of the chateau. But uh, the French have never forgotten, and from what I can make out, they never will forget what we did on that day. I know I won't. <laughs>